Okay, so to get PS4 Explorer 2.0 installed, the first thing you will want to do is either head over to the Homebrew store and download it from there, or you can download it from the link that I will put in the description. Once you download it and go ahead and install that package file, and you should have it on your PlayStation 4. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is, is that PS4 Explorer 1.0 as well as 2.0 can absolutely live together. So you can continue to explore PS4 Explorer 2.0 while you have the 1.0 on your system. So let's go ahead and let's run PS4 Explorer 2.0 and there is a flashy new splash screen there. And the first thing that you will see is that it did detect that the firmware that I'm currently on is 9.00. Now it's asking if we want root access or sandboxed. We're just gonna go ahead and pick root access. That way it has full access to all of our files. So at the very beginning, you can see this brand new dark theme that PS4 Explorer 2.0 has. And the very first thing that I wanna do is I wanna press the options button on my controller. And when I do that, you see that now I have settings. So we'll go ahead and take the help setting here. And for the most part, this is identical to what it was like in PS4 Explorer 1.0. You can press the circle button if you would like to exit back out of it. Let's go back into options again though, and let's go to where it says adjust borders. So this is brand new functionality. And what this allows you to do is to, well, just adjust your borders. So pretty cool stuff that you can do here. I think a lot of people, especially regarding what type of screen you're currently using, you may find this to be very helpful for you. Again, that is a new feature. And then there is the ability that you can show the temperature as Fahrenheit. So by default, it has been shown as Celsius. But if we navigate down here, we can press the X button. It does show as Fahrenheit. Now, this is extremely high at the moment, and I do not believe that this is accurate. But again, this is the first version of version 2.0. So there will probably be more enhancements to come there to maybe make that a bit more accurate. And I am going to go ahead and press the circle button. And again, we will be out of that screen. Next up, I wanted to call your attention to down at the very bottom of the screen where it shows a USB with a check mark. And the reason that it is showing that is, is that that means that I have a USB drive that has been inserted that PS4 Explorer 2.0 has detected. If I take that USB drive back out. Well, there it goes. It shows that it is no longer connected. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that USB drive back in. And so now we could quickly access the content of the connected USB simply by using the D pad as a shortcut. So left will take us to USB zero and right is going to take us to USB one. So I'm going to go ahead and press left on my screen and there is my USB zero. Again, if I wanted to, I could have always used left or right to navigate it to USB zero or to USB one. I am going to press R3 here to bring me back to the main menu. Again, you can find all of these options by going into the options button on your controller and then just pressing help. Okay, so we'll press circle here to get rid of that. And by default, whenever you needed to navigate different files, you typically would hold down on the D-pad as I'm doing right here. But if you want to move even faster, you can hold the L2 button on your controller, and then you can navigate them a lot faster. I think that is a very cool addition to PS4 Explorer 2.0. The other thing that I just showed you was actually that all menus and the file list, they have loops. So what does that mean? It means right here, I'm in the very last file, which is safe mode. And if I press down here, it's going to simply take me back up to the top and vice versa. If I'm at the very top of the list and I press the up 
directional pad, well, then it takes me to the very end. So having this constant loop is absolutely a very nice addition. Now, I'm going to go ahead and press left to get back to my USB zero. And now let's take a look at selecting multiple files. So we can press the R1 button here in order to select files, but now you have the ability that you can hold R2 and then just lightly tap on R1 and select everything. So it's a lot easier and a lot faster once you get a hang of it. Now you can cancel this multi-select with L1. So I just pressed L1 and now they're completely gone. So again, multiple files, just press the R1 button here. And if you want to select everything, hold down R2 and then touch R1, everything selected. And then again, you can cancel with L1. Now let's take a look at some of the advanced options. Hold the L2 button and I'm going to press triangle here. And here are the advanced options. As you can see, I can search. I can set a folder as a home, I can download a URL, I can activate the FTP, I can get full read write permissions, and then finally I can look at installed packages. So let's take a look at the search first. So I am going to press search and it's going to ask me for a keyword that I want to search on. So I'm going to select mount, so I'm going to go M N T here, and we're going to go to R2 for done. And now at this point in time, it is searching for mount in the root directory. And so it has already found a couple of different files that has that in the search criteria. Again, down at the bottom, you can see it quickly searching the remaining files on the PlayStation 4 hard disk drive. And so now you can see that it found five elements. And if I wanted to quickly jump to where one of these files are, I can simply highlight it and then just press X. I could also, if I wanted to go to a new search by pressing the triangle. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and press X. And as you can see, it navigated to where that file is located, which is in this MNT folder. Okay, so let's take a look now at the copy, cut, paste method that includes the copy speed. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select one of these MP4 files by pressing the R1. And now I'm going to press triangle to bring up the options menu here. So again, you can see that there is a new folder, there's a new file, there is this send to option here where you can send it to your slash data folder, which is very helpful, especially with the new gold hen and other applications that is starting to look inside that folder, or you can send it to a mounted USB drive. Okay, so if we want to try out the new copy and paste speed, I can select a file right here and I can select copy. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder here. And for that new folder, I'm just going to say new, and we're gonna go in that folder. Now I'm gonna press triangle here again, and I'm going to select paste. And there is the new copy speed. So you would be able to see how fast it is copying a file over. Again, the very top number is zero of one, meaning that I'm only copying over one file. So if you were copying multiple files over, then that number would obviously change. So if you had two files, right now we would be on one of two. And now when you delete something, there is a new message box in progress here. So let's go ahead and press triangle here and let's select delete. And it is asking us for confirmation before we delete it. I'm gonna say yes here and there was the progress bar. It flashed on and off, but that at least shows us the progress of deleting a file. So that would be a lot more useful if you were deleting a mass number of files. 
One other thing is, is that when you create a new file or a folder, the new object is automatically selected. So let's create a new file here, and we're just going to simply press R2 to be done, and that file is selected. Let's go ahead and create a, another file here. So we'll just give this the name of new file2.txt and press R2 here, and now that one is selected. The same would go for a new folder as well. So we're going to select new folder and then R2. So it makes navigating a little bit easier because every new file or folder that is created, it automatically navigates to that folder. And the same can absolutely be said if you take the rename option. It will automatically select the renamed file or the folder. And if you had maybe a, another folder in here, and if we decided to delete this folder right here, it will keep the position of the selector. So I can come right here and select delete and select yes, and it kept the position. Whereas in the past, it may jump back up to the top once that process has been completed. And so again, there is this send to and properties option. So if we take new file two, for example, and press triangle, and let's go down to properties, it will tell you a little bit of information about the file. So for example, one file, zero folders, and then what the size of that is. Now there is an advanced option that shows the installed PKGs that list all the installed apps and games and their data. So again, press in the L2 button and press in triangle will bring up the advanced options. And if you go down here to the bottom, you will see installed packages. So here we go. This is the first one. Here is the second one. Here is the third one, fourth one, and so forth. And this is currently all of the packages on my internal hard disk drive. Now you can switch to the external by pressing the triangle button. And if I do that, it will list the packages there. I don't have anything installed on an external hard drive on this PS4. That is why you don't see anything. And then for installing packages, let's just take this package right here, which is Orbis FTP. Again, it's in this nice little dark theme here, but you will see that it is saying for you to press L2 and X in order to install that package. So there we go, we just pressed it and now it's added to the downloads. And then in just a moment, it will be ready to use. Again, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm absolutely loving PS4 Explorer 2.0 so far. If you want to install a language, you just really need to open the Xlang file and then press X and then just restart PS4 Explorer 2.0. So it's really easy to go ahead and to be able to use a language that you are familiar with. And so that will make this even better because you'll be able to download a language in the language that you speak and be able to use that with PS4 Explorer 2.0. There has been general optimization of all the code. And again, it does support MP4 files. So here is actually a video that I made and here it is. It is playing just fine here. Now you can turn on the audio and so forth. But again, just a great integration within the PS4 Explorer 2.0. So for video, it does support MP4 and move files. For audio, it supports OGG and WAV files. And then for images, it supports JPEG, PNG, and then DDS. I'll include a link to all of the other things, such as compression algorithms that it supports, avatars, languages, and much, much more. So that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Okay, I'll see you on the next one. Michael, out.